This is Alan Olson's America Dreams, The Keys to Life Success, where we talk about how to live the life you want to live. What are your dreams? What do you want out of life? And what defines success? Welcome back. I'm here today talking to J.D. Vaughn of J.D. Vaughn Consulting. And we've been in the area about uh, this rising generation of entrepreneurs. You know, it's said, and I heard this quote by one of the leading venture capitals here in the Bay Area, that 60% of the jobs five years from now will be in technologies not even invented today. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's, it's encouraging to know that uh, there's a lot of optimism that change will still stay in the air. You know, if we, if we look forward and look, like you said earlier, find places where, where money changes hands, find how you can add value in that transaction, businesses grow. Just had to look at it a little differently. So, JD, I got a question. Let, let, let's take a, a scenario here for you, mm -hmm. and say that uh, I have a friend, Bob, and Bob wants to start a new technology business, but he lacks the resources to do so. Mm -hmm. And where do you suggest Bob turns to to find the resources that he needs to start his business? Well, if we're talking about money resources. I mean, he needs money to get started. Um, he can find it in the venture capital space, but that's going to be difficult. If he doesn't already know somebody in that space, venture capitalists want. They want 10x growth over three years. What I'd recommend initially is a private investor getting started, and then perhaps going down a private placement route, doing a private placement, which is simply raising capital directly with investors, with family offices, private investors, uh, people in the investment business would say doctors, dentists, and other wealthy individuals. And you can do that with private placement. It's just like raising capital for a public company, and the SEC allows you to sell shares in your company when you're starting it up. You need a business plan. You need a private placement subscription document, and you need a financial marketing plan. Yeah, it's good advice. A lot of people would initially think, money, I'll go down to the bank, only <laughs> to find out that, uh, yeah, that, that's not the place. No, banks aren't in the business of, of loaning money. They're, they're investors' money for high-risk ventures. But there are people that have, you know, they may have a million dollars, and they want 10 or 15 or 20 percent of that placed in high-risk ventures. You know, what if somebody bought a little bit of Skype 10 years ago? What if somebody bought a little bit of Microsoft when it was high-risk? 30 years ago. I mean, those kinds of those kinds of opportunities, there are investors that want those opportunities. You so, know, you, you always hear about that one company, though, that, that succeeds, but you, you don't often hear about the seven that failed in the same time frame. Absolutely. J.D., is that what you do? It, if, if I wanted to find some seed money and if I came to you, would you help me to find that private placement? And it, Indeed. Normally we focus on raising somewhere around four to five million dollars and we get you started with a private investor that puts together the thirty or forty thousand dollars necessary to do the business plan, write the subscription, and then take it to the marketing organization that would market that package that would generate then the five to ten million dollars you'd need to get the business on its feet. Wonderful. What do you think about the individual that's a do-it-yourselfer? It says, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bootstrap this business <laughs> and I don't need to talk to anybody. Well, you know, I, I, have, I have a client, well, he's not a client, but he developed a software that was unique, and it was powerful, powerful software. And he decided he wanted, to, he wanted to keep that and build it slowly over time. By the time he got halfway there, there were 45 competitors in that space. The window of opportunity, it's only open for a short while. So you can decide you want to have 100% of something that may not take off, or you can have 5% of something that's absolutely extraordinary. And if you do the math sometimes, the 5% of something that takes off could be a bigger number. That's interesting. You know, there's a law out there that... Uh that, that seems to consistently be applied and it works, that typically when you're starting a business, it takes more than one. Absolutely, it takes more than one. And it takes a vision, a focus, and a discipline about how do I make it work. If you have that discipline, and, and whether you find money through a venture capitalist or one of our private placements, or you do it through a personal loan or investor, people can sense the passion and your focus. With passion and focus, you get a lot done. Interesting. Now, you know, so let's go back. Twelve years ago, mm -hmm. you couldn't lose in the VC market. That's right. That's you know, right. The, uh, the, the, the charts, you know, everything's going off charts. In fact, one of my friends, he was one of the chief technology officers at one of the big four firms. Mm -hmm. And uh, they brought him into a conference and, so, and, and they said, well, can you show us the methodology by which a VC should be valuing companies? <laughs> this guy said, I'll try. <laughs> Well, today, it's uh, what he said then certainly doesn't apply now, but what do you think about today's market? Well, in, in the VC space, and it's kind of interesting, uh, if you slice and dice where they're putting their money, primary 25% of the money in the VC space going into software today, 21% biomed, 
Then we move into other areas like industrial energy. Uh, you can get these numbers, by the way, if you want to find out where people are, the smart money is going. Uh, you can go look on uh, the Venture Capital Association, uh, National Association, and it'll give you all this, the spreadsheets, the breakdown, where it's going. But think about this. In the year 2000, there were 8,000 deals funded by VCs, about almost $100 billion. This year, the forecast is going to be about $26 billion and probably 3,000 deals. Wow. A significant reduction. But people still can find money. You just have to look for it in different places. Yeah, and the money is becoming a lot smarter out there, too. A lot smarter. They have more information. And still, here, here's the key, though. People want, I don't care if it's an investor, a VC, or you, you want extraordinary results without ordinary infrastructure. You need to learn how to do more with less. You know, it's interesting, uh, and even as good as people are, even if, with respect to they feel that they have the best ideas in the world, the best and the brightest out there, miss deals. Absolutely. I was, uh, I was in a meeting with uh, Scott Cook, and, uh, and uh, after the meeting uh, we were visiting, and he, he was telling me, he says, I had an opportunity to be an angel investor in Google, <laughs> and I didn't understand it. And I said, no. So... You know, the, and there's story after story like that. There's, I, I think, is, is there a certain amount of luck that goes into a, a, a business that just goes off the chart? Well, think about it. Uh, VCs will tell you if they hit one out of ten, if they bat one hundred, they can have a great, great success. One out of ten, but they got to go to the dance ten times. So I think it's a question of how many you look at, how many opportunities have you screened. You know, you hear these stories about well, I could have invested in Google. Well, if you're always looking at all the startups and you're looking at them all the time, you'll find another Google. But you've got to be a part of that discipline every day looking at those opportunities. If you were back in the 90s, who would have thought that Apple would be the most valuable company in the world today? And who would have thought that at and is out of business? Just, It's amazing how landscape changes. Absolutely. And it speaks to the fact that you cannot predict the future based on historical trends of the past. Cannot. I, I like the uh, the one the consistency when you're trying to draw uncertainty out of the markets. One of the the trends that I often look to, and clients will come in, uh, is that of this trend of the baby boomer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, Harry Dent uh, uh, wrote several years back. This is in the late '80s, early '90s, a, a, a book on the, uh, the 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 effect the baby boomers have had on the society. You know, going from what the Schwinn bicycle was in the uh, the '60s to California real estate in the '70s, consultants in the '80s, mid managers. And in the 90s, um, that continued on. But then he says, the late 2000s, all of a sudden, the baby boomers are beginning to retire. Mm -hmm. So what's the hot industry now? <laughs> Biomed. Biomed. They need help. I mean, invest in retirement homes, for gosh sakes. I mean, take a look at opportunities for what are people going to do when they retire. Look at those businesses that touch those spaces. Uh, that's where boomers are going. And obviously, we know what's happening in the biomedical space. I mean, that, that's the fastest growing uh, my son-in-law is a Ph.D. in that space and just, just doing wonderfully. That, that makes a lot of sense. So when you're out there uh, forecasting the future, the more that you can connect into those trends, I think, think you have a better shot. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, J.D., this has all been really good. Can you stay on for another segment with us? And, I'd be uh, glad to. Thanks, Alan. Excellent. Well, this is Alan Olson's America Dreams, the Key to Life Success. We'll be back in a moment with more information on how we can get businesses going in this broken economy with J.D. Vaughn of J.D. Vaughn Consulting.